So this is the thunderstorm generator, which is an invention by Tasmanian Malcolm Bendel. Um, basically, what it's capable of achieving is with very minimal modifications to any type of combustion system, we're able to get what is essentially fresh, breathable air out of the system. So minimal carbon monoxide, minimal carbon dioxide, and there are a slew of other benefits as well, which, uh, you know, just sort of the icing on the cake. Yeah, I'm just an independent replicator that has done this, and Jack and I are members of the Australian build team that are putting this together and trying to promote it because we believe that, you know, we can solve Australia's um, carbon emissions requirements in years, not decades. And because it's a scale invariant system, this can be applied to any number of combustion systems that run on diesel, natural gas, petrol, uh, from a small generator like this up to a coal-fired power plant or an industrial chimney. So it's an opportunity for Australia and Oceania to lead the way with this kind of technology. Here in South Australia, um, you know, we have the resources, we have the steel from Wyala, uh, and we have the, the know-how to be able to, you know, modify the systems that are already in place in our infrastructure and, uh, yeah, change, change the status quo for energy generation. So basically, we've already started the um, uh, the, the analyzer going. So this is a, an exhaust gas analyzer from uh, Kane in the UK, um, and this is an, a commercial grade uh, gas analyzer. And uh, we'll be pr predominantly looking at the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and oxygen readings. At the moment, it's it's running, and you can see over here that we've got 21% um, oxygen, and the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are zeroed out. So when we go through the demonstration, we'll be doing the uh, unmodified generator first, and um, then we'll move over to the modified generator. At some point, we'll cut the uh, unmodified generator, and you'll tell, be able to tell that the sort of smell just disappears. We're running a thousand watts uh, of halogen globe on each system, and additionally, there's a 28 watt um, uh, compact fluorescent ionizing globe in here. And yeah, so Jack will be uh, handling handling the probing, but we. Should be able to just get started straight away. Look at the um, piece of foam, that loop of foam. So we're going from fresh air now, which is around the 20% oxygen mark, and we're rapidly dropping five, four. So basically we're, we're dropping to 1%. We're now under 1% oxygen. We're over 11% carbon monoxide, over 8% uh, carbon dioxide, and those are climbing. Yeah. We have a high it's obviously warning, warning. <laughs> we're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, normally you wouldn't want to run this in a closed area. Uh, we'll wait for the numbers to stabilise and then we'll move on to the other one. So I'll just put this down. If you guys do want to view the numbers constantly, they are over there. Okay, so currently on the unmodified generator, we're seeing 0.07% oxygen. So almost no oxygen is coming out of there after the combustion process. Uh, we're seeing uh, just under 17% carbon monoxide and just over 10% carbon dioxide. Okay, and if you're interested in the other things, basically what we've got here is nitrous oxide, then oxides of nitrogen, uh, which is a combination reading, and you've got hydrocarbons here, those are kind of the most interesting thing. We can see how rich the fuel mix is by the lambda. Okay. All right, I've seen that coming down a little bit. Right, so far, what we're reading out of this generator, which is running the same amount of load, is carbon monoxide in, in the order of 0.1%. Um, carbon dioxide is just over 1% and oxygen is just below the 20% mark. So it's doing the same amount of work as the other generator, but what's coming out is essentially breathable air. Hydrocarbons have also been substantially reduced, and it's a more oxygen-rich um, uh, fuel mix. We are still around that 19.5 mark. We might be able to get that a little bit better, just by sort of, it's currently a little bit um, over-revving. So by bringing it back down, we're still around the same numbers. I, you can play with the tuning a little bit. Essentially, this is just a tinkerer's setup that we've, we've done here. Um, but, you know, we're stable around those numbers, which, if you consider what's happening within the engine, which is a, an, oxida an oxidation reaction, you shouldn't 
have the available oxygen that you're seeing. That's why the oxygen doesn't appear on the other side. You guys are all aware of this, but um, you know, for, for that, um, you should not be able to get almost equivalent to atmospheric levels of oxygen after a combustion action has taken place, and you've been providing the same amount of power for these two uh, thousand watt lamps. Question: Is the oxygen being taken from the water? No. So if you come around and have a look. You're talking a minimal amount of extra hydration in the air. So the only thing that's changing, now if I were to take this lamp off, you'll see the numbers go back to what you would expect. Well, it um, comes back out as oxygen. The sort of the, the action that the thunderstorm generator yeah, is doing, actually, that, that occurs in here. So it's basically, yeah, it's a magnetohydrodynamic system, essentially. So because what you've got is with two counter-rotating vortexes, you're getting the maximum three-dimensional shear forces, like in terms of the magnetic field. You've got a high temperature shear, but, uh, shear, but that sort of diminishes over time. Uh, but yeah, those, it's the counter-rotating vortices that are sort of providing this, um, you know, three-dimensional maximal shear.